self-love and self-care are not things we should just be giving lip service to. You deserve to love yourself fully. Today, I'm gonna to share with you my five rules for self-love. Stay tuned. For the best advice on self-care and personal empowerment, be sure to subscribe to my channel and click on that bell to get notified when I release new videos every Monday and Thursday. Rule number one, self-care is not selfish. In fact, it is one of the most beautiful gifts you can offer to not only yourself, but others in your world. I, I want you to imagine for a moment what this world might look like if we all showed ourselves some compassion, if we all loved ourselves fully, if we could hold space with love for all of the things that we've done all of the things that we're doing and all of the things we're yet to do. What if that happened? What if we could hold with compassion space for our mistakes, space for our successes, space for those moments when we felt less than, but also space for those moments when we were fully and completely in our truth. Self-love is not selfish. In fact, it is one of the most important gifts we can give ourselves. Rule number two, maintain those healthy boundaries with people, with food, with situations, with activities that you engage in, with work, with all of it. Determine what your healthy boundaries are. And by the way, if you're curious about healthy boundaries, I recorded an earlier video about this. I'll include the link in the corner above as well as in the description below, so be sure to check that out. But healthy boundaries are an essential component to how we show ourselves love. If we aren't honoring our healthy boundaries, if we aren't honoring our no's and our yeses, we're immediately giving our power away. And when we give our power away, we're not loving ourselves. We're not showing up with compassion for ourselves. So maintain healthy boundaries. Know what resonates with you and what doesn't. And don't be afraid to say no or yes when it matters. Rule number three, assume the yes. Assume the yes in your life. Assume that it's going to work out. It's fascinating to me how we move through life and we assume that things won't work out. I'm one of them. I'm human. For whatever reason, our brains like to catastrophize. They like to assume that we're not gonna get the job, the relationship is gonna fall apart, Things won't work out. When I was living in Chicago, I had all of these beliefs about my life. I would always be in debt. I would always be living in the city. I would be single forever. I would never be able to get out of the piles of debt that I had found myself in. And these beliefs were me not assuming the yes for myself. Assuming the yes would have been, you can get out of that dingy apartment, Heather. <laughs> You don't have to be in debt. In fact, you can be completely debt free. You will meet somebody that you consider to be your soulmate. I could have continued to assume the no for myself. I could have continued to assume that everything would be as it was or that it would be worse. And by the way, that's how I was thinking at that time period in my life. You can also assume the yes. You can assume that that job you want to apply for, you'll get an interview. You can assume that that person you're attracted to that you really wanna have a conversation with will like you back. You can assume that you can have the house in the geographic location that you want. You can assume the yes is in your life because when we assume the yes, doors begin to open. All of a sudden, everything becomes possible. So assume the yes for yourself and see what a difference it makes. I'd love to know, do you assume the yes in your life? Comment below. Rule number four, tune in to what your body is telling you. Your body is a treasure trove of information. Start to listen to her. Do you feel butterflies in your stomach? Are they good butterflies or not so great butterflies? Notice when your shoulders start to creep toward your ears. Notice when you get that little flutter of excitement in your chest. All of these are signs that your body is telling you and we shouldn't ignore them. So
somewhere along the line we learn that trusting our body's wisdom, that trusting what our body has to tell us isn't valid information. I'm here to tell you that it is. As somebody who works from an embodied approach, I'm always asking myself and others, how is this making you feel? Not how is it making you think, but how is it making you feel inside? Where do you feel it in your body? When we can tune into this, we're tuning into the wisdom and we can allow that wisdom to guide us as we move forward. That is self-love and that is trusting what we have to say to ourselves. Rule number five, there are no should do's or have to's and that pertains to this rules list as well. When it comes to everything in life, there are no should do's or have to's. When we apply should do's and have to's to our life, we are applying somebody else's script to our lives. We are reading somebody else's game plan for how we should be moving through our day, months, years, through our life. I'm here to tell you that as much as I put these out as rules, you should only take the ones that resonate with you because there are no should do's and have to's. You get to choose what works for you. Now, with that being said, I invite you to give things a go. So don't always allow others to take your power away from you by giving you a should do or a have to. Instead, tune in and trust what your body is telling you. Is it in alignment with your healthy boundaries? Right? So we start getting to choose is this a should do or have to, or is this a yes, I'm feeling this, yes, I want this, yes, I desire this for my life? I'd love to know what your biggest takeaway from this video was. Be sure to share it in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like it, subscribe to my channel, and click on that bell to get notified when I release new videos every Monday and Thursday. Stay ignited out there. Keep loving yourself. I will see you soon. Bye.